up what up welcome back to the channel i'm Mordai J and we are locked in this is episode two of p valley season two and the pink is open and ready for the re 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 opening the only problem is we see that corbin is back and he's still trying to buy the pink we also don't know what little merge is going to do with this tour him and miss mississippi need to get it right so they can go out on tour and diamond he's still working down at the corner shop we need to bring him back to the club but before we jump into this episode shout out to the notification gang if you're new to the channel you'll be a part of it hit the subscribe button turn on your notification bell so you get something every time i upload hit that like button it's the easiest thing you can do now with the pink being open we know Uncle Clifford, he's trying to make sure that they don't bring in the good people and they take over the land and bring in casinos. But Uncle Clifford only owns 15% of the pink. So we need to see what Haley is going to do. And is Andre going to be able to navigate this deal like he wants to? So let's jump into it. This is episode two of P Valley. This week we're getting introduced to some new characters and we have an audition at the pink for some new blood because you heard Beyonce needs her Kelly Rowland and her Michelle. So who else but Big L is going out and just looking at all the ladies that are coming in so we can see what the new hirees are all about. And guess who took a liking to Big L's eyes? A girl named Big Bone because she's super thick. Thick, thick, thick with it. And if you ain't good enough to be a scripper, you need to go be a sweeper. But Big Bone, give me your name and your number, and we're going to make something happen. Well, it's time for auditions. We got Uncle Clifford in there. We got Haley, and we got Mercedes. And they're watching everyone come up. And there's some, some characters in here. I'm looking like, y'all know damn well y'all ain't about to work at the pink. But we get introduced to our two new stars, our up-and-coming stars. We got Roulette at the very top, and we got Whisper at the bottom. But you put these two together, you got that Whisper and Roulette wheel, they up here going crazy. And Mercedes is looking at it like, these young girls, they, they doing things I've never thought of. So, of course, Mercedes seen all of this, and she's reluctant to announce that these two are coming up to be part of the pink. Whisper, you first. Roulette. You second, a.k.a. Wanda from Snowfall. She doing her thing. She the young version of Mercedes. And then they even brought up Big Bone. The only thing is, Big Bone, you're going to be a bottle girl because you ain't got no moves on the dance pole. And this is where Mercedes is getting upset because she's seeing that Big Bone can't really dance. So Autumn is saying, listen, <laughs> she's going to go work the bar, but you're going to teach these young women how this stripper stuff goes. Just because you got the moves, you ain't got the endurance. You ain't got the strength. You ain't got the stamina. And Mercedes is like, I ain't no coach. <laughs> Haley looks at her and says, uh, yeah, you are. You're going to teach them everything they need to know. So these two, they're already button heads. We know about the situation in the house where she told Haley, don't bring any new girls. Back at white boy Derek's house in Keyshawn, he gets a text message from Clutcher and Company Auto Shop basically saying, Derek, we regret to inform you that that manager job you applied for has been filled. Now, Derek ass is outside talking to the sheriff because he said that Diamond assaulted him, but he only assaulted you after you called him a gutter nigger. But you didn't mention that part, did you? Keyshawn comes out, gives some lemonade to the sheriff and Derek's out there, but the baby starts crying. So the sheriff wants to talk to her by herself so she can see what's really going on at the house. Because if you heard the sheriff, he said, yeah, Diamond assaulted you. But that means I would have to go arrest you also because you went up there and you did some things. Now, what he's asking Keyshawn here is everything all right. And she's like, yeah, things are good. She's basically telling him that, look, I got some stuff going on online. If you need some, you know, saying some some weight loss tea, I got you. And the sheriff is like, nah, I'm not trying to hear none of that. But you're not doing no porn or nothing, are you? She's like, nah, nah, it's nothing like that. It's legit. But I do have an online fan base. We know Mercedes has the messed up arm. She's doing her best. Whispering roulette watching. They like, ooh, ooh, dang, that look bad. I feel like I could, I could get up there and, you know, saying I could do that for you, Mercedes. But she doesn't want to show her weakness. And then you hear Roulette talk about, hey, Grandma, I can go get you some of that green alcohol from the store that you like. And Mercedes is like, what? And look at Big L up there. He just a laughing because he's installing new rings because these young girls, these new girls, the new blood. Yeah, they about to show us some new tricks up there. And Mercedes, you got to keep up. During the auditions, Corbin and Andre, they had showed up. Well, that's because you remember Corbin dropped that money off at Andre's house and he's trying to get Haley to come and see the light and sell the pink. Now, they're offering $500,000, which is way more than the 250 that they bought it for, which was already overpaid. But Haley, being business-minded, 
and an accountant, she's like, if you guys are offering 500,000, then that means this place is worth 10 million. Well, in reality, it's probably not worth 10 million. Maybe, maybe 700,000, but this place ain't worth that much until the casino comes in and redoes it. But basically, Haley and Uncle Clifford, they're saying, we're not doing that because that's a small offer. We know if they offering that much right now, it's gonna be worth more. So basically Corbin is upset because he can't get this deal done. And that was a good move by Haley. The crazy thing is business-wise, Corbin is right. Because eventually, if it does get voted on that the casinos come in, this land is gonna have to be torn down and they're only gonna auction it off for like a dollar just so they can get the land off their property and bring in the millions of dollars. Now, Corbin is right on that aspect, unless the pink can get up and people vote against the casino. But you hear Uncle Clifford Corbin, you like a good ass whooping. Sometimes that's all people need to get the point across. <laughs> Haley and Uncle Clifford get to finally have their one-on-one -on -one about this situation since it caught them off guard. In business one-on-one, -on -one, you and your business partner need to be on the same front when you're in there. Y'all need to have the same aspirations and ambition on where you're gonna go in that business. And after it, amongst yourself is where you decide, hey, this is how I feel about this situation. This is where I think you should go. But never do that in front of the people that are offering you a deal because they can use that as weakness. But what did Haley just say? We might need to get to working right now. We need to open up as fast as possible tomorrow on your birthday, your 40th birthday, because if not, we're gonna have to sell to Corbin. They gotta generate money. They gotta have the interest from the people to vote against the casino. Now they were supposed to open up in two Fridays. Mercedes got the flyers and it's opening up this Friday. Even Mercedes came in and the reason she's so upset is because that shoulder is hurting. She know deep down inside she ain't ready to perform, but that's what champions do. You go out there, injured or not, and you try to put on your best performance. <laughs> now, y'all thought I was playing. We going where the blessings reside, where the blessings reside. I told y'all, Mama Benz, a.k.a. Patrice, she dropping them mixtapes, and they going like fire. Uncle Cliff go back home. Grandma in there, you know she always kicking it. Uncle Cliff are talking about, I don't want to go, I don't want to go see anybody on my birthday. So Ernstine's like, well, maybe we could do something. Uncle Cliff's like, hell no, I don't want to see nobody. It storms his ass on upstairs. <laughs> and guess who shows up? Lil Murder. Now you hear Ernstine say, you ain't been by here in months. Uncle Clifford talking about, she ain't had nothing in months. Ernstine talking about, she ain't had nothing in 15 years. But Lil Murder comes over and he's, he's just saying, I have a, a message that I want to leave to Uncle Clifford. Basically apologizing, you know, he was sending text messages, wasn't getting nothing back. He was seeing that he was moving all kinds of wrong, but he's about to go on tour and he just wanted to drop by and, and say his piece to Uncle Clifford and let Uncle Clifford know that he was wrong in this whole situation. Whole time, Uncle Clifford behind the door. Andre is in Mississippi taking care of business for <sighs> RIP Mayor Tidell. So when he gets there, he sees a water hose coming from Tidell's house and he follows it across the street. There's kids outside playing in the water. There's people across the street just using it. There's even a guy in a wheelchair that pulled a gun on him talking about, you better announce yourself. And now what he's finding out is Tidell, whenever people were getting behind on their bills, he would actually let them use his water and charge it to the city. When he goes back to the house, he checks the books and you hear him calling Tidell, damn, you a Robin Hood. Because basically what he was doing was taking money from the city and giving it to the people. So a lot of people thought he was bad. But if you were behind on your bills, water, maybe electricity, he would come and do something for you. Take the money from the city and give it to the people. You remember last week, Andre was in the house and he was getting ready to watch a film. But Corbin pulled up and it said Abraham's son. Well, he puts the tape in this week and it sees it's a young Andre in Tidell. And he's basically encouraging him to be what he wants to be. Now, we hear young Andre say, I want to be the president. And the guy on the camera is like, you can't be that. And what did Tidell do? He checked him and said he can be whatever he wants to be. So that's why Andre was so close with him, because this is like a godfather slash father to him, because he always encouraged him from the time he was little to the time he passed. White boy Derek and Keyshawn. This relationship, we all don't agree with it, but Keyshawn, she decided to go with white boy Derek over Diamond and pulled the gun on him. Now you remember, Keyshawn, the way she got out the house, she was throwing away diapers. She went to the dollar store, or should I just say the store, and Diamond was there. And how did Derek know? Because 
her location and sent to his phone, her GPS. And he's like, you went up there to see Diamond? She's like, no, I just I just went to get some moon pies. He was there and he, he, he yelled at me. So now she's going with Derek and what he's saying. This is out of pure fear. Derek gets on the phone and calls the store and makes a complaint on Diamond. Now, this isn't the first complaint that Diamond had. I know I'd even be calling the store and making a complaint if he's smushing you in your face because you don't have a mask on. But he's like, he assaulted my girlfriend. He he was calling her names. He was like, what did he, what did he do to you, Keyshawn? She said, oh, he yelled at me and he was treating me unfairly. And we're all looking at it like, you're really going against Diamond because Derek is over here calling the store and complaining. But there's got to be a bigger picture. Now, you remember Diamond explained why he got on white boy Derek's ass because he called him a gutter nigga. And Keyshawn like, you wouldn't say nothing like that, would you? And of course, Derek is going to say, no, you know me. I love you and my daughters and, and all our kids. And I would never say anything like that. And Keyshawn just listening to it. Me personally, I don't think that she's falling for it, but she has to hear it so she can put her plan in place. And that's to go on this 12 city tour so they can get that house that they always wanted with a backyard. We all know Wody work at the funeral home. And what is he driving? He got the hearse out. I'm talking about all gold, everything except for the red on the inside. Little murder in the back. And he's like, hey, man, slow this thing down. Slow this thing down. But little murder wants to know where are we going? We got to get prepared for this 12 city tour. He calls up DJ Never Scared like, hey, bro, you ready for this tour? He talking about I can't even make it. I'm in the studio right now. Now, I don't know who this female artist is, but... They put their hands on DJ Never Scared's shoulder, and you know he always scared. She talking about, run that track back for a real beat. Now, it sound like Megan Thee Stallion. I don't know. I don't care. But DJ Never Scared is in the booth. Wody takes Little Murder to the prison. They got to pick up somebody because we need some security on the road. Yeah, Little Murder, it's going to get a little bit scary out there, so we need to go get some muscle. And Wody talking about, I need to be alive because someone got to bury you too. Now, they all clowned around, but you seen Little Murder's face before they got in. He was a little bit disappointed. Maybe this could potentially lead to him getting exposed. We don't know yet, but he didn't look too excited when they showed his face. Everyone's trying to get their ducks in order so they can go out on this 12 city, 12 night tour. Now, we got Keyshawn and white boy Derek on the couch and Rome showed up. And he's like, all right, look, all, all our clients, blue girl guap, all of them, they get C-list accommodations. You know what I'm saying? They gonna come in here. But Keyshawn's listening to it and she's saying, are my accommodations taken out of my cut from the door? What about all my costumes and stuff? Basically, what she wants to be paid is accommodations on its own. I get the money I need to, to have a standard of living. And then I also want to cut off the door. Now, they ain't making that much money right now. So Rome is like, yeah, that's standard procedure. Whatever you spend comes off your cut at the door. And Keyshawn's saying, well, if we don't make that much off the door and I'm spending all my expenses on where I stay, then I'm not really going to make any money. So this is having Rome looking like, damn, I need to go back to the drawing board. Now they got Rome in the back of the hearse and he's trying to negotiate with Wody and them, but he's upset because Keyshawn just told him the whole business plan sounds like trash. Now, now Big T over here playing killer where if somebody winks at you, you gotta die 30 seconds later. So Rome is like, man, what the hell y'all got going on back here? It's already hot as hell in this thing. But he figured it out and Keyshawn is in the door watching because she knows what she told Rome. I can't go on a tour if we ain't making no money like that. So he needs to figure out what Wody and Lil Murder are going to do so he can accommodate Mississippi financially. The pink is open. The music is good. Big L up there. They already told you we can get through a night with Big L just having a CD. No mix, no nothing. Just a CD full of songs. And of course, Haley is walking around. She's looking. Okay, we got the girls in here working. This is how you're supposed to open back up. Now, in the back room, you got Whisper and all the girls. They looking at this little rock, and she's talking about, you got to talk to it. Now, you remember the girl that didn't know who her baby daddy was? She's like, is uh, is this guy the baby daddy? They over here looking at it. Nope, he ain't the baby daddy. You hear her say, good. I ain't got to give him a paternity test. What in the country hell is going on down in the pink? But Mercedes is like, y'all need to get y'all ass up. We need to get focused. We need to go to that champagne room and get some practice. Of course, the young girls, they, they ain't with that. They talking about, I got this, Roulette says. She got this. And I was looking at Roulette, and I was like, yeah, you got this, girl. But guess what? 
Haley comes over and tells, hey, Mercedes, you remember? I was going to get you a bigger cut off the door, and it looks like you're going to be good for this. You know what I'm saying? But then the young girls also played a trick on her, and they got rubbing alcohol, green rubbing alcohol for grandma. <laughs> whole time, Uncle Clifford at the house, because Uncle Clifford didn't want to do nothing. Uncle Clifford didn't want to see nobody on her birthday. She's scrolling through Instagram, and guess who she stops on? The Dirty Dozen Tour. Coming to a club near you. And you hear Ernestine downstairs. Clifford, take that damn trash out. Stink down here. <laughs> when Clifford goes out to take out the recycling, <sighs> Clifford gets kidnapped by four people with screen masks. Now, Uncle Clifford, that's a big motherfucker. In the words of Uncle Clifford, that's a big bitch. But it took four of them. They picked Uncle Clifford ass up, threw him in the trunk. Ernestine ain't hear nothing. While Uncle Clifford is getting kidnapped, Haley's trying to run the club. She's trying to rub the pink. Now, Toy comes over. She's talking about, hey, Big Bone, she got to know she's just a bottle girl. She's a bartender. She can't be on the, on the bar twerking and stuff, getting all that money, because that's money that the scrippers is losing. But we all know how things go, especially in New York. The bottle girls is making more money than the strippers. But this is down in the pink. And they see all that thick on that counter in the pink. They're going to spend that money at that counter in the pink, if you know what I mean. Turns out it wasn't a legit kidnapping. All they did was pick Uncle Clifford up and take Uncle Clifford to a surprise birthday party. Uncle Clifford talking about, I look like a runaway slave. I need some lotion on these heels. <laughs> you need everything right now, Uncle Clifford. Everybody in here getting lit and you in here looking like trash. <laughs> they got Uncle Clifford up on the throne like a queen. Uncle Clifford in there going crazy. They got the music playing. Do it, baby. Stick it. I stick it, baby. Do it. I'm like, okay, they got that Southern music playing. But then all you hear is the whole music change. And Uncle Clifford looking across and only you. Uncle Clifford thinks they see little murder. I only have eyes. For you, little murder over there talking about bang, Uncle Clifford in her feelings. Now, of course, Whisper, her name is Whisper because she talking to all the spirits, all the demons. They in the champagne room, they supposed to be practicing. And she's like, well, someone needs to talk to this pole. And what does our girl Roulette say? Are we going to make some bank tonight? Whisper said, it said, hell yeah. Mercedes, she ain't dealing with that, though. She looking at it like, nah, this is a sign that we might not need to perform. But Roulette and Whisper, they looking at it like, <laughs> where the money reside, where the money reside. Now, they over here, they about to cut up this cake of Uncle Clifford. What is that? Got the perm? What is that? That same hairstyle pink hat? But they about to cut up this cake for Uncle Clifford. And everybody's seen Uncle Clifford looking at the young man over there that we think is Little Murder, but it ain't Little Murder. They talking about, Clifford, you need to go get what you want. If that's what you want, you need to go do it. Uncle Clifford talking about, nah, that ain't gonna do nothing but make you drink 150 cases of liquor. You're gonna have your heart broken. Everybody's looking like, what? They all get to arguing and stuff, but eventually Uncle Clifford comes to her senses and goes after what she wants. But it's really because Uncle Clifford wants to skate, and Uncle Clifford wear them size 14s, them boots. Uncle Clifford goes over there and talks to the guy that she thought was Little Murder. It ain't Little Murder. It's some random nigga handing out skates. And if you watch the episode, you watch the episode. We don't need to go no more into detail of what they did back in the skate room. But we headed back over to the paint. I'm talking about we running over there. The girls are out. Beyonce with her Kelly Rowland and her Michelle. They out. Big L looking like, okay, yeah, we got some new girls in here. Haley looking like, wait a minute. Did anyone practice these moves? This stuff looks a little bit dangerous. But of course, we just heard the spirits say, we making bank tonight. They in here, everybody going crazy. I'm talking about stimulus check here, stimulus check there. Everyone throwing money like they ain't been in the house for a year and a half. Stuck down. Bills not paid. Who cares? The pink is open. Now, this is where the turn up begins. Mercedes takes the lead because everybody wants to see Mercedes. Whispering roulette, we just got that new pole installed. It's time to take it to another level. Make Mercedes jealous because everyone's throwing them dollars for the new girls. Same thing happened when Autumn Knight showed up. The new girl gets all the money. 
I'm talking about roulette and whisper. They going up there tag teaming roulette upside down, holding on with her legs, holding whisper by the arms. Or she doing the splits upside down. And Mercedes is looking like, how in the hell is they doing that? And everybody else's dollars is touching the sky just so they can be up there with roulette and whisper. Now this drives Mercedes to get up on that pole. These two up top, they doing their thing and they look over and guess what they see? It's like a scene right out of power when Ghost was dying. Mercedes then fell off the damn pole. Now at least she's falling onto some money instead of the concrete flow. Mercedes shouldered and gave out. They got her in the back room. They had to call Diamond up and everyone was looking like, oh my God, man, what are we going to do? But Diamond, we already know how he is with the little healing stones and the protection stones. He's going to figure out what's wrong with Mercedes and he's going to try to cure her. So he tells her to turn over on her stomach. Now, I don't know what Diamond is doing, that Creole, that voodoo, that down south chuckle and chuckle I don't know what he's doing. But whatever he did, he just extracted something up out of Mercedes. He had to get that hurt up out of her. And you hear Uncle Clifford talking about if he can do that without touching. Imagine what that D do. Everybody looking like, hey, Uncle Clifford, we trying to <laughs> we trying to fix Mercedes. You over here thinking about the wrong thing. Just like the title of the episode, Diamond said he just extracted seven pounds from her shoulder. Now it takes seven pounds of pressure to pull a trigger on a gun. But Mercedes got that hurt up out of her. And guess who she's mad at? Haley. If you didn't open up this early, I wouldn't have been this hurt. This is all your fault, Haley. Now Diamond is big with these energies and stones and he has Montavious's ring here. Now Montavious is gone, but Diamond says this is his protection, him big L's and Haley's protection. Now, they were the ones that get rid of the body, so he feels that he needs to keep it. But Adam is right. You can't have any evidence, none whatsoever. Because if they come in to see this, why do you have Montavious's ring? You gotta explain that. You gotta account for any time that you ran into him. But Diamond wants to keep it. And that seven pounds flew out the window. After all of this, we know that Mercedes is mad at Haley. So what does she tell her outside? You need to move out the house tonight. Haley talking about, well, tomorrow? Nope, it ain't no tomorrow. You got to get up out the house tonight. Now, that's a horrible way to get kicked out. I would have told her with the pandemic going on, you can't just kick me out. Plus, you need 30 days to kick me out. Mercedes don't care. We don't care. We work at the paint. You have to find a new place to stay, Haley. White boy Derek and Keyshawn, they're in a the room talking. And we know that she's trying to go on tour. We know that she's trying to get that money together. We know that she's trying to get rid of white boy Derek and go do her own thing. Now, we seen the text message earlier saying Derek did not get the job, and he's saying, I didn't get the job. So she's acting like she didn't know that. But what she's doing is about to throw that thing on him, throw that monkey on him, you know what I'm saying, to confuse him a little bit and tell him, I'm gonna go on tour. We're gonna get right, we're gonna get that money. Everything is gonna be okay, let me take care of you. Now, she threw this thing on him. I don't know why. Could have just kissed him a little bit, but hey, it is what it is. She about to go on tour and she's leaving in the morning with little murder. Haley then moved out. And where did she move? To the office of the pink. Why not? I mean, you own it. Go on ahead, get living there rent free, save you some money. But you see her looking at the stripper pants. You can take the stripper out of the club, but can't take the stripper out of the girl. You know what I'm saying? Once you in the pink, you in the pink for life. But she gets up and she heads on out the room. When she leaves the room in a surveillance camera, what do we see? We see Montavious hanging in the champagne room. And she goes out there, she grabs a bottle of that bourbon, and guess what? We getting on that pole, we about to, hey, Autumn Knight might need to make an appearance at the paint. So she gotta see if she still got the moves or not. You see, she was hurting that back a little bit, but for the most part, she's elegant up on that stage. And guess who shows up? Andre shows up because the pink front door was unlocked. Big L got the hell up out of there. But he sees her dancing and he's just thanking her for telling him to come down to the funeral. Because you remember, she sent her condolences when Brittany found out he took the phone back. So these two, they're getting close. They don't kiss. But you can see that their relationship is going to probably get a little bit stronger. Even though he's on the other side with Corbin trying to make this deal go through, he still has that soft spot for Haley. And she still opened up enough to him that they can come together and have this moment together with the sun shining in on them. And the last thing we see, Big Tech, Little Murder, 
Miss Mississippi and Rome, they all in the hearse. It's time to go on the road. Miss Mississippi, she left the kids. She's on the road. She's finally doing what she wanted to do. All right, there you go. Episode two of P Valley. Let me know what you think. Is Miss Mississippi and Little Murder, they going to have a successful 12 city tour or is it going to come down to some kind of arguing and everything just go haywire? Also, is Andre, is he too vulnerable to Haley or is he actually going to help out the pink just like Tydell was helping out everybody with the water? Let me know what you think. I'm Moda J. Make sure you tune in tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern for the live after show discussion for P Valley episode two. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.